Hello, this is Nathan Webb, and this is a simple tutorial on how to do jaw rigging on a cartoony character in Maya 2011. We're going to use joints to control her neck and her head, and then we'll put an extra one in for her mouth. On this character, which I made, she has uh, teeth, a tongue, and you can see inside of her mouth. So we're going to want to open and close her mouth. We could use blend shapes to open and close her mouth, but those just give you linear results. A uh, jaw joint will look a lot better. It'll give you rotation of the jaw. You have to do a little bit of extra skinning for that jaw joint, but the results should look a lot better. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and put joints in her head. I'm going to look on the side view make sure I'm in the animation menu and then click on joints I'm gonna put one in for her neck one in for her head kinda at the base of where her ear would be then I'll hold shift and put one up on the top of the head and hit enter we can't see the joint so let's go to shading x-ray joints now we can see those joints and I'm gonna put one extra joint in for the jaw. The jaw is going to be right here and it will extend down towards the chin area. So I'll select the joint tool again, select this, click once for my jaw, and then click down here. That will be the end joint. Let's name these joints. You always want to name the joints in your character. This one will be neck, head. This one's end of head. We're not going to have any skinning on this one and this one will be jaw and end jaw and we'll parent the jaw to the head bone so I'll click on the jaw joint hold down shift select the head joint and hit the P button we can make our joints go bigger by going to display animation joint size and we can globally scale up the joints if you want to see them a little easier now we'll go ahead and skin the character. She has some extra uh, parts to her geometry. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the extra parts. The hair is separate. The eyes. And the eyebrows. We could just actually parent these to the head joint. That'll be easier. That'll work. So let's take all these things and parent them to the head joint. Now when I move the head joint, all the extra parts of our character will follow. Let's do the upper teeth. The upper teeth should be stuck to the head as well. And the lower teeth they're going to go to the jaw joint. So I'll select the teeth and then I'll select my jaw joint and hit P. Same thing with the tongue. The tongue should follow the jaw joint as well. So you can see how the parts of the body move but her head doesn't move because we haven't skinned it yet. So the next step, I'm going to skin the head and then we're going to adjust the weights on her jaw so when you move the jaw joint, her mouth will open and close. Now that we have the joints in there, let's skin her face mesh. So to skin something, we'll select the mesh and then we'll select the base joint of it and we'll go to skin bind skin smooth bind and we'll bind to the joint hierarchy max influences will be three two would actually work for this character but three so three will work fine and I want to have my normalized weights be interactive that way when we adjust our weight painting the, each vertice will only be controlled 100 percent if we have it normalized later it makes it tougher to skin in my opinion. So I'll put that on interactive. I'm going to hit apply. Now we should be able to see the whole head move when you move the neck. When I move the head, 
it should move the entire head. It also moves the neck some. We'll have to fix that up. And the jaw, ooh, that looks pretty bad, but we'll adjust that later. So to adjust the weighting, let's go ahead and select our skin or our geometry and then double click the paint skin weights tool. That'll bring up the options for it. And you'll see the white area is the one that's being controlled. Over here we see the different joints and what they influence. Now when I first get started, I don't want these end joints to have any influence whatsoever. So I'm going to select an end joint, make sure I'm set to replace for the paint operation, and I'll put the opacity all the way to 1 and the value down to 0 and hit the flood. That way that top joint doesn't have any influence at all on the geometry. And I'm going to do the same thing with the end jaw. We don't want this joint to control the jaw area. We want the joint, the actual jaw joint back here controlling it. So I'll hit flood. That gets rid of the weighting on that joint. Now I'll, I'll go to the neck and we want to paint this whole area white so with the value. We want to add a value of 1 to it. 1 means controlled, 0 means not. To make our brush bigger I'll hold the B button down and then use my left mouse button to make the paintbrush bigger. So I'll just click with my left mouse button down here to make sure that this entire area is controlled by the neck. So we can test it out. We can grab the head joint and when I rotate it we shouldn't see the neck move. I see a little bit of movement down here so we'll go ahead and repaint that. Double click on my paint tool and make sure we click down here. We could also use the component editor. First I'm going to hide the joints to do this. I could use the component editor by right clicking, go to the vertices, and I could select all the vertices around her neck and make sure that only the neck influences that. So I'll go to Window, General Editors, Component Editor, and it looks like a spreadsheet. I'm going to go to Smooth Skins, that's where we have all of our skinning. We see all the different joints here, and the neck should be controlling this 100%. So as I scroll down, it looks like I have it. If it wasn't, you could just select the neck there, hold shift, and then type 1, and then that'll have the neck control at 100%. So that's the component editor. That's one of two methods of adjusting the weights. You can either use your paint skin weights tool, which most people prefer, but to be more precise, you can use the component editor. Now we'll take a look at the head see what that influences. You can also move the head so it looks kind of bad like this neck area. I'll double click on the paint skin weights tool and we're, we're going to have the neck control her uh, Adam's apple. Well, if she's a woman she shouldn't have an Adam's apple, but her throat area. So I'm going to take the opacity down. I'm going to paint the neck a little bit here. And you see as you paint it, it interactively adjusts. That looks better. And if you do it too much, we can. you always want to use the additive method. You don't want to subtract weighting. So I'm going to go to the head, and I actually want almost the whole character. I don't want the jaw to influence this too much. So I want to paint a lot of this area with be influenced by the head. So I'm going to make my paintbrush pretty big and just click a lot over here. I'm going to leave some of it so the jaw will influence some. I'm going to hide the hair. Control H will hide the hair. And you see the back of the head looks pretty bad. So I'm going to go back to the paint skin weights tool and we'll adjust this area some. So I want to make sure the head influences all this area. So I'm painting it white. Now this area on the back of her head could be influenced by the the neck a little bit. So I'm going to drop my opacity down and have the neck influence a little bit. Well, That looks kind of bad. So I'll go back to the head. We'll have the head influence this.
If your skinning starts to look kind of rough, you can go over and go to the smooth option. And the smooth option will help smooth out an area. But it might put weight on stuff we don't want. So that looks okay. The back of the head doesn't look great, but it should be hidden by the hair. And then let's see what our jaw does. I'm going to go back to his bind pose, go to skin, go to bind pose, and we'll see what the jaw does. So you move the jaw. Oh, it moves the upper lip. So we're going to want to take the influence off the upper lip. Let's fix that upper lip area. So I'll go in here, double click on the paint skin weights tool again, and we see if you, since we have the head joint selected, we want to have that influence the upper lip. Your jaw doesn't influence your upper lip. So we want the head to go there. I go back to add, and I'll take the opacity up, because we want the jaw to influence the bottom part, not the upper lip. So I have the head do most of this. Now we can take a look again, rotate the mouth down, and we see that the mouth looks a lot better. Well, it looks kind of messed up around here, so we're going to have to go and fix the inside of the mouth, but generally it's looking okay. So maybe the head could influence a little bit. Now that's a lot. We kind of want to smooth this out. So I'm going to have the jaw influence the corner of the mouth just a little bit. And you see how that goes down there. And let's take a look at the inside of the mouth too. Let's have the head influence all at least the top part of the inside of the mouth. You see the teeth are kind of poking through. That's because we needed to put more weight on the head area over here. Okay, so that kind of looks all right. Okay, that was a bit much. So go back to the jaw, and we'll just add a little bit to the jaw area. So you smooth it out. Now we could find out which side we like better. I'm going to add a little bit to the head, and then we could mirror the skin weight. So if I like the right-hand side of my jaw or my mouth better, I can mirror it over to the other side. Now, I want to take a look in here, see if I can fix some of this. Maybe the jaw should influence that instead of the head. So I'm going to paint down here with my brush and see if we can fix that a little bit. The My character's head is really low poly, so we may not be able to fully fix it. Maybe it's the inside needs to be fixed a little bit. Okay, that's about, I think, as good as I can get it. And if I like the left side better than the right side, I'm going to select my geometry, go to Skin, Edit Smooth Skin, Mirror Skin Weights, Go to the options for it. We want to be on the YZ plane and we want to have positive to negative. The left side is positive, her left side is positive, and it goes over this way. Hit apply, and we should have an asymmetrical mouth now. So let's take a look at it again. You can open and close the mouth, and it looks pretty good. Especially if you put smooth mesh on her, select the mesh, and hit two. So she opens her mouth, her teeth go with it, she can close her mouth. And then the next step I'd do is I'd make blend shapes to make her mouth go wide and narrow and have her lips close. Because if we close her mouth here, her teeth are actually going through each other. So we could put blend shapes on the character. But this is just basically how you can put a jaw joint in a character along with the head bones 
to get a basic opening of the mouth and it has good rotation values. If you look at it from the side, you see that this rotates just like your jaw would rotate. Thanks for listening. This is Nathan Webb.